the Jaguars finished this past season 9 and 8. Their first game came against the Washington Commanders, where they lost 28 to 22, and the Commanders were led by quarterback Carson Wentz, who was the starter who shouldn't have never been the starter. It should have been Taylor Haneke. And if Taylor Haneke starts, then the commanders probably make the playoffs. Carson Wentz threw for 313 yards, four touchdowns, had two interceptions. I thought he had a good, bad, and ugly performance. That's what I consider performances like these, good, bad, and ugly. I thought the tackling for the for the Jacksonville Jaguars was pretty atrocious. They couldn't really get pressure on Carson Wentz. They were constantly blitzing him, having very little success. They were constantly crowding the line of scrimmage with five defensive linemen. And I thought Trevor Lawrence, who threw for 275 yards, had one touchdown, one pick. Wasn't very good in this game either. I thought his accuracy was all over the place. But despite Jacksonville's poor performance, they still had a chance to win the football game. Trevon Walker had a big INT. Tyson Campbell had a big INT. Trevon Walker also had a sack. There was also a special teams blow under in the game as well but yeah at one point in the game Jacksonville took the lead and it was 22 to 14 the commanders quickly erased that eight point deficit to a two point deficit Jacksonville has a chance to put some more points on the board and start off their season 1-0 but they didn't Carson Wentz and the commanders drive down the field they capped their drive off with a 24 yard touchdown pass to Jaha Dotson and then they also convert a two-point conversion with a pass to J.D. McKissick, and Jacksonville goes on to lose. Week two against the disappointing Indianapolis Colts, Jacksonville dismantled the Colts 24 to nothing in their home opener. 24 to nothing. They did a very good job of getting to Matt Ryan, making him uncomfortable. Matt Ryan had some terrible throws in that game, and, and Jacksonville was able to capitalize on those opportunities by generating three interceptions. They didn't allow Jonathan Taylor to go off and have a big game. He only rushed the ball for 54 yards. His longest run was 21 yards. Trevor Lawrence, I thought, played very well. I thought this was probably his best game of the season. He was 25 for 30, 235 yards, two touchdown passes, took what the defense gave him, bought some time in the pocket, made some throws by utilizing his legs and throwing on the run. Moving on. Week three against the Los Angeles Chargers, the disappointing Los Angeles Chargers, who I thought was going to be a juggernaut in the AFC, got dismantled by Jacksonville as well, but they took a worse beating than the Colts did by losing 38 to 3. I'm sorry, 38 to 10. <laughs> Jacksonville ran the ball 36 times for 151 yards, had one rushing touchdown, dominated them at the line of scrimmage offensively. Trevor Lawrence also had another pretty good day. 28 completions, 39 passing attempts, 262 yards, and three touchdown passes. James Robinson had a very good day in 17 rushing attempts, 100 yards, one touchdown. Um, Zay Jones was targeted 11 times, had 10 receptions, 85 yards, and a touchdown. Christian Kirk, nine targets, six receptions, 72 yards, one touchdown. And Marvin Jones, Seven targets, four receptions, 33 yards, and one touchdown. So, um, after that, I was like, okay, look at Jacksonville. You know, they're 2-1. and one. They destroyed Los Angeles, who, again, I thought was going to be a major player in the AFC. And I was like, okay, look at Jacksonville. Being a sleeper team, kind of uh, taking everyone by surprise. Can they keep this going? Week four, they go up to Philadelphia on a rainy afternoon, but they lose 29 to 21. They jumped on them early, 14 to nothing. But once Philly was able to settle down, they were able to run their offensive strategy and the defense was able to clamp down on Jacksonville's offense. Philadelphia rushed the ball 50 times for a total of 210 yards, four rushing touchdowns. Trevor Lawrence wasn't very good. He had 11 completions, 23 passing attempts. 174 yards, two touchdowns, had an INT, had four fumbles, and lost them all. I thought he did a poor job of holding on to the football too very long and not being too aware of what was going on around him in the pocket. And then after that, and I know I'm like kind of picking on Trevor Lawrence here because I'm just reading his stat line, but I'll get to the whole team in a bit. And then after the Philadelphia loss, Jacksonville hit rock bottom a little bit. They lost to Houston, they lost to the Colts in their rematch, they lost to the Giants. They lost to another disappointing team in the AFC, in the Denver Broncos. They got a victory against the Las Vegas Raiders, so they snapped that five-game losing skid, but then followed it up with a loss <laughs> in Kansas City. Then after the bye, they got mollywhopped by Detroit, but they went 6-1 and one in their last seven games and fought their way back into a playoff spot and made their way into the playoffs so now we get to the postseason the los angeles chargers once again took another l to the jacksonville jaguars 30 to 31 or 31 to 30 but in this game it looked like los angeles was going to dismantle jacksonville but that wasn't the case los angeles jumped on them 27 to nothing in the first half trevor lawrence had four bad interceptions in the first half particularly in the first quarter but Jacksonville was able to engineer a drive at the end of the half and it looked like Los Angeles just abandoned their game plan in the second half receivers were just running free all over the field I don't know what happened 
Now, some people might say that this game was rigged. And to those people that say that, I don't blame you for feeling that way. But all in all, Los Angeles, show once again that you can't trust the Chargers. The Chargers will always be the Chargers, huh? No matter what city that they're playing in. Then we get to the Chiefs, the divisional round playoff game where they lost 27 to 20. In this game, Jacksonville played them tough, just like the first time they met in the regular season. And in that game, the story was the same, in my opinion. Just like this game, missed opportunities. They didn't really take advantage of Patrick Mahomes being out for that big drive that Chad Henney engineered. Trevor Lawrence threw a deep pass to Christian Kirk that he dropped. There's play in the first half where Trevor Lawrence got sacked and they could have gotten some of those yardage back, which, which would have put them in field goal range to Jermichael Hasty but he dropped the ball, so. And then Jacksonville had a big fumble in the second half as things were winding down. So if I had to sum up Jacksonville's season, how would I describe it? Two words, missed opportunities. I would say missed opportunities is what killed the Jacksonville Jaguars season. There were games to where they had good drives, like in the Giants game, in the Denver Broncos game, even in the Texans game, they're driving down the field and Trevor Lawrence tries to force a bad pass and it gets picked off. Um, Travis Etienne fumbles in that Giants game. Special teams wasn't very good. In the Chiefs game, the first time that they met in the regular season, the kicker Riley Patterson missed two field goals. He was one for three. And then I believe it was in the second quarter. Trevor Lawrence throws a touchdown pass in the red zone to Evan Ingram, but that gets erased due to a penalty. Defensively, they really couldn't get consistent pressure on the quarterback, although they did ramp up their defensive success. Them generating turnovers and creating havoc in the backfield picked up in the second half of the season. But in the first part, the first half of the season, they weren't really having a whole lot of success. They weren't really getting to the quarterback. They were blitzing a lot because I think the coaching staff knows that they don't truly have a dominant pass rusher. Even though I like Josh Allen, I think he's a good pass rusher. And I don't really think he had a terrible season. When you look at his numbers, and, you know, numbers don't always tell the whole story. You look at his numbers, he had seven sacks. He had a touchdown that he scored in that Tennessee game, the final game of the season. He scooped it up and ran it back for a touchdown. Two pass deflections, four forced fumbles, 22 hits on the QB. There were plays that he made that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. And the biggest number that I, I mostly care about when it comes to pass rushers are sacks. I want that sack number to go up a little bit higher to, to at least 13 or 14. But there are plays that he made that won't show up on the stat sheet where he got in the quarterback's face or uh, made the quarterback uncomfortable, causing him to step up in the pocket, ending up in another defender's arms. Or if the opposing team was going to run a running play to the right, he would be able to pop out and get into that runner's lane, have him cut back on the inside, and it would be a tackle for no gain or for a loss. So I like Josh Allen. I just need him to be great instead of good. In the Chiefs game, he had no sacks, no no QB hits. So the pass rush for Jacksonville has to be addressed. In the draft, they drafted a defensive tackle out of North Carolina, Raymond Vahasek. Then they got a defensive end out of Oklahoma State named Tyler Lacey. So I would say the biggest thing that they need to work on defensively is the pass rush. They need a consistent dominant pass rusher like a TJ Watt when he's healthy. I think TJ Watt is the best pass rusher in the NFL when he's healthy. And Michael Parsons and Aaron Donald. So they need a guy like that. Hopefully Trayvon Walker will turn out to be that guy. I, I know he didn't really stand out too much and he was the number overall pick, but he didn't really stand out too much this past season. And I don't really judge players too harshly when they get into the NFL. Not everyone's gonna just show up and, and start dominating. It's gonna take him a good minute. So hopefully in his third year, he'll start to show some true progression for Jacksonville. And Real quick, going back to the missed opportunities, in that Chiefs game, they had a chance to pick off Chad Henney. Foye Aluakon had a chance to pick him off. The ball got batted and he had a chance to snatch it out of the air or to pick the ball off. Missed opportunities is what killed the Jacksonville Jaguars for the most part this season. Drop passes, Zay Jones had a lot of drop passes. He had 13 drops. Everyone else dropped the ball, but he stood out the most. So do I think that Jacksonville can hang with the big boys in the AFC? And now when I think of the AFC, what teams come to mind? The Chiefs, obviously, the Bills, the Bengals. <sighs> do I dare say the Chargers? Do I wanna say the Chargers? I mean, they did make the playoffs, so I'll put them in there, but whatever. I'll have to account Denver, even though they looked terrible last year and they were another disappointment. I like to think that Russell Wilson and that Denver Broncos team won't be as bad as they were last year. 
now that Sean Payton is the new head coach. So I have to put them in there. And then there's the Jets. Now that they have Aaron Rodgers, I'm hesitant to put them in there as well because I don't know what they'll look like this season. They will struggle in the beginning. People are going to freak out. Be like, oh, what's going on with the Jets? You know, Aaron Rodgers, is he done? This was a bad signing. Da -da -da -da. It's like, okay, relax, people, relax. But this isn't about Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. So going off of what I do know, right? And that is the Bills and the Chiefs and the Bengals. Can the Jacksonville Jaguars beat the Bills if they meet in the playoffs? I think they have a chance of beating the Bills. Josh Allen. The Bills don't believe in a running game. Well, they do. They just believe in having their quarterback run the damn ball and hurdle over people, stiff arm people. The Bengals. That offensive line is still shaky. It's still not very good. I think Jacksonville's pass rush is good enough if you... Take the pass rush that they had last season, put it against the offensive line for the Bengals that were there last season. I think they disrupt and get to Joe Burrow. And plus, Joe Burrow in the playoffs hasn't really been all that spectacular to me. There has been a whole lot of performances to where I go, whoa, you know, this guy is just lighting it up. You know, he's hitting guys on 20, 35 out routes and 40 yard post routes, 26 yard dig routes and, and stuff he's made plays when he's needed to when his team has absolutely needed a play to stay in the game but he's only had one performance to where i thought he played very well and that was against the bills <laughs> but can they beat the chiefs can they beat patrick mahomes and the chiefs they came close twice this past season if they just clean up the little things i mean who knows i i i think they can i mean that's the beauty of sports you don't always know what's going to happen you look at the Bengals. i predicted the chiefs would smash the Bengals, and they beat the chiefs in arrowhead in the afc championship game and went on to compete in a super bowl the Bengals. okay i did not pick the Bengals at all to be a super bowl contender so i like jacksonville i do think that they have a chance to be a true sleeper team now that fat waste of space urban meyer is gone now that they have Doug Peterson. They have a nice structure. I think he's going to help out Trevor Lawrence a lot going forward. His offensive game plan for Trevor in that offense is to get the ball out of his hands quickly, hit guys on wide receiver screens, bubble screens, throw it in the flat, curl routes, shallow routes or drag routes, creating one-on-one -on -one matchups with the linebackers, having the receivers run inside dig routes. And if he does take a shot down the field, it'll be like a corner route or a throw up the middle of the field to a tight end up the seams. And then have Jermichael Hasty and Travis Etienne. I like the James Robinson and Travis Etienne one-two punch a lot better, but they traded James Robinson to New York to the Jets. Jermichael Hasty had his moments, but I just like that running back duo a lot better. Travis Etienne is the back. He's going to give you everything. He can catch out of the backfield. He's very good at running through running lanes, breaking tackles. He has good speed. And I think he's going to be a true asset for Trevor Lawrence going forward. So Doug Peterson's strategy is solid. It's balanced. He'll call up some throwing plays and then mix it up with the run, which is how offenses should be run nowadays. Nowadays, teams are just throwing the ball all over the place, but I think he does a pretty good job of keeping the offense balanced, and then he'll hit you with the gimmick play. He'll do a reverse play, or it'll look like the receiver is going to get the ball. Then the quarterback will fake it to the receiver, and then he'll actually give it to the running back, and the play will go the opposite direction, and it'll fool the defense. He'll have a wide receiver coming out of the backfield and have Trevor Lawrence throw it underneath. And speaking of Trevor Lawrence, I think he will get it going. I made a top 10 worst quarterback list, and he could have made that, that list very easily, but I thought there were other 10 options that were a lot worse than him. He didn't really have a good season. I thought he had two good games, but that was about it. He's got to do a better job of making plays down the field. Um, he struggles at trying to put the ball in soft spots. So for example, Evan Ingram will be running a corner route or running up the seams in the middle of the field and there will be a linebacker underneath and a safety up top. Trevor Lawrence will throw that ball too high and he's gotta do a better job of fitting the ball in those soft spots in the zones. He's gotta do a better job of throwing the ball down the field. And if he can do that, which I think he will, I like Trevor Lawrence, I think he has what it takes to be a very good quarterback. He's gonna to have to, especially with the weapons that he has. I think that he'll also need to develop a chemistry with his wide receiving core. I think the guys he needs to, to truly be on the same page with have to be Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram seemed to be rejuvenated this past season when he was in New York. He had a hard time of catching the ball. He had a season to where I believe he dropped 
the ball 11 times when he was in New York. He has the talent to be great. He has the talent to be an elite tight end. And he did drop the ball a few times this past season. But for the most part, I thought he made some big plays. So Trevor Lawrence needs to do a better job of trying to push the ball down the field and hurt opposing defenses with his arm and make big plays and develop a true chemistry with Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk. I like the running back, Travis Etienne. And I like Jermichael Hasty a little bit. But like I said, I, I like the um, James Robinson and ETN duo a lot more. Defensively, you got a young, talented cornerback in Tyson Campbell. I like the secondary. I like the linebacking core, Devin Lloyd, Foye, Alua Khan. So Jacksonville definitely can make some noise this season. I think they are capable of upsetting a few teams. So that's just my take. Please tell me what you guys think. That is it. Please like and subscribe. And I am out.